Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Petty ransomware sample, which has been very widely discussed on the internet right now because of the global impact which is being felt from this particular strain of ransomware. It's being distributed and propagated in a very similar fashion to how the WannaCry ransomware was being distributed not so long ago. But in this particular situation, we don't see a kill switch. We don't see the same kind of uh, uh, weaknesses in the code that uh, were present in WannaCry. And we're seeing some very, very significant impact to critical national infrastructure around the globe, which is very worrying indeed considering that Microsoft has patched the uh, the exploits which seem to be uh, the cause of the propagation of the malware. This is the hash that everyone is talking about right now and it's on VirusTotal and it was uploaded just a few hours ago and has already got some good detection from the antivirus companies which is great and that will continue to increase over the next the course of the next few hours I'm sure to so make sure that your antivirus on your local and corporate machines um, are up to date and set to receive those automatic updates to make sure that you are patched um, as, uh, as, as kind of up to date as possible uh, on your patching which is is always good advice. Um, we, we notice as well that this particular ransomware is a DLL in the form of a DLL, so we need to invoke it slightly differently to how we would normally execute a, 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 um, a normal EXE on a, on a Windows machine. We need to ex actually execute the, uh, the DLL ourselves uh, in our lab environment in order to infect the machine. So I'm gonna show you the ransomware. I'm gonna infect my Windows 10 VM for you so you can see the kind of indicators you can pull out of it from a process perspective. We can see some of the network traffic and how that operates, and we can see some of the strings from the memory. And then I'm gonna quickly show you in a disassembler, some of the kind of things you can pull out from a disassembly point of view as well, really, really quickly. Um, okay, cool, so here's my uh, Windows 10 VM. I've got the uh, the DLL here on my desktop. I've got Process Hacker running in the background so we can uh, poke around the process uh, and pause it and look at the memory strings if necessary. And I've got Process Monitor here running and my filters are set to look for process create. So I've just got my, where the operation is process create, uh, and I can look for any processes which are spawned and have a look at the command line invocation of how they were uh, executed. I've got an administrative command prompt here, and I need an admin command prompt in order to execute this malware successfully. If I just run it as a standard user, it will not encrypt my machine, but it will actually try and propagate around my local and possibly external network as well. Um, so you become part of the distribution method, but you don't necessarily have the admin rights in order to actually uh, perform the actions that the malware wants to, which is to encrypt all of your files and to remove certain uh, privileges from you as well. Um, so let's run this uh, from an admin perspective. We use run DLL32. We give it the name of the DLL, and we also need to, need to feed it the name of the entry point, um, or in this case, the ordinal value of the entry point, which, which in this particular case, there is only one, um, and that is uh, number one. Uh, so we, we do that, we hit go, and then what we see is, we can see here in uh, Process Hacker, uh, the process run DLL being spawned, and if we just maximize the proc, proc on screen and just have a look at this detail um, column here, we can see that one of the first things that happens is a, is a um, scheduled task is created in order to shut down shut down my machine uh, in a short space of time. And then we can see as well, there's some all, all of a sudden there's some traffic, uh, web dev traffic to IP addresses on my subnet, uh, which seem to be trying to connect to the admin dollar share. And um, we can see that this is ticking away here in the background to other IP addresses as well on my local network. And then it seems to be if you leave it long enough, it will try other, other IP addresses, which are not indeed on the on the local network, just random IP addresses, which it will probably create as part of the malware routine. So that's pretty interesting, and that's definitely traffic you want to monitor for in your environment. And if you see any of that, then you might want to think about how you can protect yourself against that kind of uh, activity. Um, okay, that's cool. Let's have a look at from the process side of things. Let's just go into Process Hacker, have a look at memory and strings, and see whether there's anything which uh, anything else we can kind of glean from this already. You'll notice as well that my files actually are actually not encrypted yet on my machine. My machine is still intact, although I am. My my machine is part of this bot which is trying to distribute the malware um, so all, already I'm part of the worm uh, and actually what we what we find is the scheduled task and we see some of the strings here in the memory straight away this the scheduled task is created in order to shut down my machine because it needs to reboot in order to start the encryption process and we'll see that in just a second when I forcibly do that uh, so we can see the scheduled task that's being created. Uh, and if you wanted to, you can also go and have a look at that in Windows yourself. Uh, if we have a look at task and we can see that the um, uh, the actual schedule, oh, I don't want that, uh, we want the, uh, the scheduled tasks, uh, the task scheduler, uh, and we can see it actually created in the Windows uh, task scheduler library here. Um, and we see it right at the top here that it's not executed yet, uh, but it's set to execute in 1947. The triggers will be, um, it, it will just execute one time, it's enabled, and it's just gonna start uh, shutdown.exe, uh, and then just go for it and just you know shut, shut, shut my machine down without any kind of um, prompting or, 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 inter or interaction from the user. Um, so that's cool. Um, let's have a look and see if there's any other strings of interest. We saw there was ad 
admin dollar is trying to be connected to. So let's do a quick search for admin dollar and we see, yeah, indeed the, ad, the IP address is here in memory um, of the admin dollar shares that it's trying to be connected to. Uh, we also see as well, if we flick down here, we see some of the, uh, here's the message that we're potentially going to see in just a second. You know, oops, your files have been encrypted. If you see this text, they're no longer accessible, etc. The Bitcoin wallet address and also the email address as well to send the send the uh, the details of your of your key to uh, in order to discuss your payment. So plenty of other stuff you can have a look at in there as well. And here's an interesting string just to just to pluck out of uh, out of interest. Um, here is a string which suggests that the ransomware will actually be deleting uh, and removing all of the uh, the the Windows security event logs. Uh, so the security logs, the the system logs, the setup logs, the application logs, etc. All are going to be removed by this particular command. So uh, that's that's pretty interesting as well. Just to, just to pluck this out of um, out of the strings here as well, we see references to WMIC and also um, uh, this uh, forward slash node colon uh, and then some variables after it would suggest that um, WMIC across a network. So if you feed something with forward slash node uh, and then some a list of IP addresses, this will be a connection that's trying to be made uh, using WMIC across a network. So again, indicative of how the uh, the network traffic is being seen. Just flip back a little bit to um, Procmon just to see whether there's anything else of interest in here. Uh, we don't see anything realistically that we haven't already seen from the strings in memory, so that's fine. We can close that out. Uh, and I don't think there's anything more from the memory strings that realistically is uh, is of interest. So I'll tell you what we're going to do is just reboot this machine uh, forcibly. So just to just to kind of beat the schedule task to it. So we'll just let that restart in the background. What I'll do here just in the meantime is I've got another VM here, which uh, again with a DLL on, uh, and we'll do some static analysis and we'll throw it into IDA Pro and just, we'll just keep an eye on uh, the Windows 10 machine when it restarts, just so you can see the process it goes through when it encrypts the machine as well. So I'm just going to throw it into IDA Pro um, and then we can uh, let that do its uh, uh, disassembly and we can just kind of poke around it and see again if there's anything of interest to us which uh, you might want to look for in your environment. So Ida Pro here is just going to just uh, chew through the DLL and just perform its code analysis and that just takes a couple of seconds. Uh, we can see if we flip back to Windows 10, uh, we can see the, the kind of check this uh, screen which uh, a lot of people will be familiar with from days gone by of Windows. Uh, but actually if you read in between the, the, the kind of usual text that we see here, it says warning, do not turn off your PC if you abort this process, you'll destroy all your data, blah, blah, blah. Check disk is repairing the sector 15%. This is actually the um, uh, the ransomware taking effect here. So this is the ransomware that's actually destroying my data, uh, and that's not, that's not great. Uh, so w once it goes through this process, we'll see probably the encryption screen after that. So again, we'll, it's at uh, twenty odd percent at the moment, so we've got a bit of time to wait for it to uh, to chew through it. So uh, IDA Pro has finished its disassembly. That's great. One of the things I like to look at in IDA Pro is the uh, the names window because this is the uh, the names of the imports of the API calls which um, the malware uses. Uh, and we, we knew there were network connections being created. And one of the ones I'm interested in here then is uh, WNet Add Connection 2. And if we flip to that in IDA Pro, just double click it, uh, we can see here, here's the, the reference to the, the API call. And if we, if we press on the, the letter X, we can see where that, where that call is being cross-referenced in the code. We can double click that and, fl and, and go to that in the code itself. So if you're using a, de a debugger, the likes of Ollie Debug or even um, X64 Debug or what have you, uh, you would be able to kind of set a breakpoint on this particular memory location, assuming and you switch off ASLR, um, and then um, you you could be able to, you'll be able to monitor those network connections as they go through. Um, in terms of your your debugging process, you can step by step that particular code, and you can see here that the the call just before the call to this particular process, we see the the username and the password and the resources etc. which are being passed to that function as arguments on the stack. So you'll be able to see where you know the IP addresses and the passwords which are being attempted um, to uh, to actually connect to make them make those connections. Um, uh, okay, that's cool. I mean, flick through the code at your leisure. There's an awful lot of code to go through. Um, what some super smart guys at Microsoft have already determined is that there is the eternal blue and the double pulsar backdoor uh, built into this uh, particular binary already albeit the data is actually encoded. It's actually XORed using a particular um, a key, which is, I think it's a single byte key of, um, of, of CC and hex. Um, and that is to evade antivirus detection for the signature of double pulsar and, and, the, and the presence of eternal blue. Um, so some, again, super smart guys have written uh, 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 scripts in IDA Pro which can decode the code uh, and, and un-XOR it for want of a better word in order to, to actually uh, prove that point, but just take for granted that we know uh, within the security key Community that is the same propagation method that's being employed uh, to distribute this malware, the same as WannaCry was indeed. Uh, so let's have a look through our data. The R data section 
is always interesting because we get to see some of the text here. So we can see some of the text which is being used by the malware and called at runtime. Uh, so we can see uh, some of the text, send $300 of Bitcoin to the following address. Um, and here is what looks to be the config of uh, file types which are being targeted. Uh, so very similar to what we saw actually in the strings in memory uh, within Process Hacker. Uh, here is where you know this information is being pulled from, from the actual binary. So doc files, message files, uh, raw files, um, VBS files, all the usual kind of stuff as well within there, which uh, looks to be looks to be being targeted by this particular malware. Um, we can also see. Um, again, going through the code, here is some of the, like the, the kind of encrypted contents or the encoded contents, which IDA Pro hasn't yet uh, kind of managed to manage to kind of decode itself. Uh, and again, you know, super smart guys have got, already gone through this and kind of uh, decoded the the contents of this. So I'll, I'll put I'll post some links into the description of, of stuff you should definitely go and check out. Here's those calls to WMIC that I was talking about as well. The accept EULA, um, the run DLL um, stuff, the WMIC stuff that we were seeing, and the node stuff as well that we were seeing in, in the strings in memory. Um, so, so pretty interesting stuff. Um, here we go, we'll flip back to Windows 10 and we can see actually it's gone through that check this process. And now all I, all I managed to do is get to this particular sc screen here with the message that we saw. Again, we saw this in the strings in the memory and it's exactly what we expected. Uh, so I need, I need to in input a key, um, incorrect key. I keep going, that's, that's literally all I can do except for reboot my machine. Um, in days gone by, you could actually live boot this machine and, and recover your files because Petya didn't really encrypt all of your files. It only encrypted the master boot record. But unfortunately, this particular variant, we have proven that it does actually encrypt all of your files as well. So unfortunately, um, or if you do have impact from this particular ransomware, then um, you know, you'll know you be relying on off-site backups in order to restore your machine. Uh, so I hope that's useful for you. Um, and again, all of the, uh, the links in the IOCs will be posted in the description. And best of luck protecting yourself against this particular ransomware. Thanks.